1990, running has grown exponentially throughout the U.S. Female runners have increased by 28%, along with the males staggering 32%. According to Runner's World magazine, nearly 36 million people run as of 2010. Behind the madness. Uh, most people would say it's madness, but I think it's just a passion for an activity. You know, ours is running, other people have passion for playing the piano. And they'll practice just as much doing that, or painting, or, you know, whatever your hobby is, I guess. The reason why I run is because it helps me stay fit, and it gives me something to do. And it, when you win, you feel great, and even if you don't, you still have friends around you to support you. And it's just a great feeling. I run because I love the feeling you get from it, especially when you're at top speed and you just feel the wind blowing through. And I also love the feeling that you get right before a race, the rush you get in, at the finish line too. My name is Damian Williamson. I've been running since the fifth grade and I like to run because I like to win. It's just fun to win. Well, my name is Coach Hans when I coach the Great Lakes Track and Field Club. Um, I used to run track in middle school and high school and in college. And um, I like running track because it, it made me feel good about uh, myself and I did well in the track. Um, I started coaching in 1979, so I've been coaching for about 33 years. And um, I like coaching because I like to um, help develop kids and help develop the talents that they have. My name is Sean Gibbons. I've been running for two years and I uh, started running because I didn't make uh, the basketball team in sixth grade. So I tried some AAU basketball teams and I learned about uh, track. So I tried running track and I turned out to be pretty good and I really liked it. And I've always liked just the feeling to run and try to just beat all the others. Hi, I'm Brian Jones and I work at Playmakers. I've been running for about 34 years. Yeah, it's a good question and it, it, it is a sport that it does take a lot of dedication. The one thing I like about it right now, probably different than I was younger when I was in high school or college, is that it, it allows you to kind of clear your head and I use running now more for just, um, you know, that kind of a, a break from work, from the kids, from family and a chance to sort things out in my head. I haven't really competed in years, but uh, it's something that's still real important to me and I enjoy doing. My name is Tony Thomas. I uh, coach for Eaton Rapids High School, uh, cross country and track. I work at Playmakers. I've been running since 1991. Um, I don't really care to count the years. <laughs> It takes discipline, first and foremost, most definitely discipline. Um, if you run in the morning and you're not a morning person, you have to make yourself a morning person. Um, if you like to run in the evening after work, even though you're tired, you have to get out the door. Um, you have to hydrate. A lot of runners do not hydrate properly. Um, you know, drinking too much Gatorade before a race or a, a hard workout or run. Um, discipline is number one. Um, you know, nutrition, I would say, is a, is a close second. Uh, number three, I would have to say an open mind to training techniques because um, where one training technique or one training regimen um, might work for somebody may not work for you. Um, so you have to keep an open mind to different training regimens. Um, you have to have goals, uh, most definitely goals. I always, um, with the kids that I coach, um, I really stress primary and secondary goals. Um, something lofty to shoot for, but then something a little more reasonable within a short time frame that they can attain. Uh, so those, um, those are, are what I really believe a runner has to have in mind um, to really become a runner and stay a runner. Hi, I'm Nick Stanko, uh, coach at Hazlitt High School. I've been running for competitively for about 15 years and uh, coaching here at Hazlitt High School for five years. Uh, favorite part of running is probably the challenge and you really just kind of don't know what what's going to happen on race day You, you kind of have an idea of you know, maybe what pace you might be able to run or you know where you're going to mix it up But um, in the race you just don't know what's going to happen. So it's it's a surprise. and That's what keeps it interesting 
Hi, my name is Karen Robinson. I've, uh, I've run since I was eight years old. I continue to run primarily because uh, I like how it makes me feel mentally and physically. You finish a run and uh, feel like you've accomplished something. Your body's been exercised just to reach a new level. Um, it's one of those things where you never, you never want to be totally satisfied with where you're at. You're always like stretching to get whatever that next level is. So it's, it's kind of the mindset that even when you do really well, it's always like I, I could I can do that much better if I just had another shot. So yeah. it's a it's a hard mindset because you're never totally happy. But yeah. I think that was I think that would was driving me is always just kind of reaching a little just that next level see what my body could actually do mm, try to I, the the night before distance races usually moderate amount of carbohydrate stuff uh, for me salads work better than eating lots of pasta? Um, usually when I'm traveling, it's kind of whatever, you know, is there. So I've become flexible with that. Um, you know, you always hear people having pasta or rice or something. And, you know, that's pretty good. You just don't want anything different that you normally wouldn't have um, or something heavy, like a steak or something I probably wouldn't have before a race. Um, so if I have a choice, pasta, pizza, or probably rice. Usually the night before every big race, I'd have a I'd eat like a pint of Ben and Jerry's. Um, I like to uh, um, make uh, chicken parmesan um, pasta. Um, I like to uh, drink a big glass of milk, uh, a bunch of water. Um, sometimes I think I overhydrate because I don't get a lot of sleep the night before a race because I have to get up quite a few times. But uh, um, I just like to generally relax. I like to uh, uh, sit um, with my butt up against a wall with my legs at 90 degrees. Um, with my legs straight up, but against the wall, um, that tends to get any lactic acid build up in the legs out. Um, I'm, uh, I'm pretty adamant about uh, what I do the night before a race. Um, I don't stay up late. I'm probably in bed by 11 at the latest. You know, might play some video games or something, but it's definitely a relaxing night with a good meal. Uh, I've had many injuries and I think that all uh, relates to running for many years with poor form. Um, at Playmakers uh, we uh, um, coach good form running. Um, as a coach myself uh, it's, it's definitely um, a necessity to, to run with uh, proper form. Um, I take my personal experience um, with uh, knee pain. I have osteochondritis desiccans which is um, um, basically arthritis in the knee decaying. Um, cartilage so it's it's an extreme injury but I fight through it every day um, I've had other injuries uh, you know typical plantar fasciitis in the arch and um, stress fractures but I, I think it all relates to poor form so I've had many over the years I actually have I had a stress fracture in my right tibia uh, which is a crack in my bone been injured before stress fractures things like that um, been sidelined for a couple months at a time and it, you know, it's part of the part of the sport. Um, if you're going to push yourself, you're kind of going to um, come up with those injuries every now and then. It's kind of the chance you take, and you hope you don't deal with it, but you're going to deal with it at some point. Yes, I've run with runners run with injuries all the time. So there's almost no time when you're you don't have some small nagging you know injury going on. The thing to do is know when to not run with an injury. About two months ago, I ran my first marathon, Okay. but I couldn't run the whole thing. I didn't train good for it, right? So I ran about 22 miles and then started a, a walk-jog program for the rest for the last four. So you hear about the wall, but uh, yeah. it's, it's a real thing. It's crazy. And it's funny, too, because in a marathon, you don't run really fast ever. Yeah. Or at least I wasn't running fast. But it's pretty strange to be running slow and just get to a point where you can't run anymore. Running has affected my lifestyle because, like I said earlier, it keeps me focused on school. And if I didn't have running, who knows what I'd be doing now? Who knows if I'd 
have the same friend group I have now, or if I even do a sport, it just, I know I'm going to run for the rest of my life. Would be dead or in jail, and I'm not kidding. Um, I grew up surrounded by negative influences, uh, a alcoholic, drug addict father, family members, a lot of um, negative influences around me, not only family, but, you know, just, um, just surrounded neighbors, you know, people that were my friends, um, and I never went down that path. I'm probably the only person in my family without a criminal record. Um, so I, uh, I think running, honestly, as cliche as it may sound, it, it has saved my life. Um, so um, I, uh, yeah, I, I would probably be in a lot more trouble. I'd be in a worse place in the world than I am now. So I'm very happy. Here's the thing that makes life so interesting. The theory of evolution claims that only the strong shall survive. Maybe so, maybe so. But the theory of competition says, just because they're strong doesn't mean they can't get their butts kicked. That's right. See, what every long shot come from behind underdog will tell you is this. The other guy may in fact be the favorite. The odds may be stacked against you. Fair enough. But what the odds don't know is, this isn't a math test. This is a completely different kind of test. One where passion has a funny way of trumping logic. So before you step up to the starting line, before the whistle blows and the clocks start ticking, just remember, out here the results don't always add up. No matter what the stats may say, and the experts may think, or the commentators may have predicted, when the race is on, all bets are off. So don't be surprised if someone decides to flip the script and take a pass on yelling, uncle. And then, suddenly, as the old saying goes, we've got ourselves a game. I will most definitely be a runner for the rest of my life. Um, if I have to, if the knee gets worse, um, I will cut my legs off and, and I'll end up like Oscar Pistorius with the, the blades. I'll, I'll run with those. Um, it's, a part of, it's a part of who I am. Um, it, it's a part of what makes me tick, so um, I will always be a runner. Just a few more and then we have a speed run. All right. Um, why do you continue to run? To keep my sanity. Um, I have a temper <laughs> and uh, uh, running uh, tends to kind of even that out. Um, it, it makes me um, more relaxed. Um, I just, I feel like I have to get out and run to have a complete day. A, a day without running is a day that kind of feels empty. Um, for our viewers, why do you choose to grow the beard? I choose to grow the beard because um, if I didn't have this beard, I would be chased by women everywhere I go. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I have to just, you know, shoo them away, like, just stop, ladies, stop, stop you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's either that or, or not wear deodorant, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> it's, it's just, a, it's a part of, of who I am. It's, you know, it's the whole metal thing, I guess, you know? You know, even before I was really in bands, I was growing beards. I grew a beard in high school. I mean, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I just, I like to stroke it when I'm, I'm in deep thought. 